think uh, I think we'd probably agree that we're, we're getting better at the poetry side of things as well as we as we go on because you guys were the first and I think probably the only multiple mm. like band uh, band yeah. shots and <coughs> <coughs> always tricky. Uh, your well, shoots, your yeah, shoots. When I look back on them, like ah, I could have done like a few things better. Yeah, used a higher aperture and stuff like that. I like a few of them. Band photos are always kind of awkward. Like I said, there's, there's always just photos like, in general are awkward, aren't they? They're always feel somebody you know is going to walk by. Aye, because we don't know you or we didn't know you as well. I think that added to the. Yeah, and there's a few awkward bastards in there down the road. There's Ricky Bobby syndrome over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hands. <laughs> worked out well now we've got the the merch on although you're hiding it oh, no. <laughs> oh yeah there we go <laughs> yeah we'll work it we'll work it i think this episode is scheduled to go out hug when they yeah is that right what a way to start indeed yeah it's only fitting it's, it's a good way to ring in the year definitely <laughs> If we'd known better, we could have uh, dropped it on St Andrew's Day to coincide with the video launch. <laughs> that would have been good. That's taking attention away, though. It's taking away viewing time. Yeah. Conflict of interest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's given too much all at once. We've not got one of those songs that, you know, you see all these things people like, if you start watching Lord of the Rings at a certain time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. By <laughs> 10 o'clock, Gandalf rides the mill or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have one of those songs that... <laughs> We like don't have a song the lines of Lord of the Rings. That's <laughs> <laughs> Wish we did. Use code PORTRAIT20 for 20% off all Bullish Coffee products at bullishcoffeecompany.co.uk. MPB is the largest global platform to buy, sell and trade used photography and videography kit. They are the simple, safe and circular way to trade, upgrade and get paid for kit. MPB is not a marketplace. They buy kit directly from visual storytellers and their product specialists evaluate all items before reselling them. Every item is MPB approved, so you never question the quality of product. So uh, uh, today we're joined by Colin, um, alt-rock band from Irvine. Um, for those of you that don't know as well, this is our, our second attempt at recording. I thought we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we'll just say I was Pete. under the uh, impression that was not going to be mentioned. <laughs> PJ kicked off last time. Walked Couldn't out. use any of the footage. <laughs> Destroyed the place. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how's it been since since the last time you've got your... It's been, I think there's a lot more to talk about. Yeah. Definitely a lot more to talk about. So I think when, when was that? Was that like <sighs> August? Or well, I think it was early August. Because it was just kind of before the... The EP launch. I think the EP's been out since. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. The EP came out in September. So I think we're just maybe like a five or six weeks ahead of the, the yeah. EP dropping, and then yeah. obviously you've had the you've gigged since then as well. Yep. Aye, it's been it's been kind of. I'd say it's obviously we've released a few albums and EPs and stuff in the past. It's definitely the most. I'd say the most rewarding uh, release for ourselves. I don't know you think so but in terms of people talking about it listening to it if you're big in numbers which i suppose i think you i think everyone almost is whether they want to admit it or not you want to see it's hard not to be yeah yeah it's like stats yeah but those stats mean something at the yeah. end of the day is listeners are going up um people that are subscribing to things are going up so for me it's, it's always nice to see because you're, you're reaching new folk that hadn't heard us before so I think it's been the most rewarding experience in terms of any release for me personally. I don't know what you think, Sean. Aye, I mean, PJ's may have put up with the numbers and all that and the Spotify list and all that. I actually don't have Spotify, but aye, according to him, it's, <laughs> it's going all right. well. Yeah, but you can see that. Though, aye, well definitely. With social media and all that, and yeah. certainly may have inter interaction. But so, PJ, you're more like me. I just sit and watch like the, the YouTube studio and check <laughs> the numbers all the time. Like. But it's kind of it's, it's strangely addictive. Yeah, it's strangely addictive. I, I like when it. I suppose like, uh, I think a long time ago, I came to the realization that we're not gonna like make it big or do anything like massive. And I think earlier on, I was always like you'd strive towards that, and you really want to play a certain venue. And then at a certain point, you're like, we're playing venues that I really like anyway, and you've got a certain amount of folk that are maybe in the start of 
the band probably would have been happy with in terms of like I want a bigger audience or like a bigger venue. And then you realise there's a good number of folk here singing your songs. Mm. Like, what more do you want? Really? Yeah. So, I I think the the stat tape thing. It's like it's interesting for me to look at like where folk are from. Like it kind of like right. interests me a lot. Does it branch out far from Ayrshire in Scotland? Oh, aye. Yeah. Aye, it's amazing. Honestly, like, um, Sweden's been big. Really? Yeah, Sweden. Well, I mean, we have played in Sweden, to be fair. Oh, cool. So, that kind of makes sense. But, like, there's, like, Japan and nice. Iceland and stuff like that. What? Why do you think that is? Because those are pretty far flung from... Um, I think Scandinavia have got a big, kind of... Yeah, there's a lot of, sort of Celtic music in Scandinavia. It's quite popular. Yeah. I, th- I think in Scotland... There's maybe a sniffiness towards anything that sounds slightly folk tinged or right, whatever. Yeah. Uh, people just, I don't know, there's maybe a wee aversion it to it there. Uh-huh. Whereas in the sort of Scandinavian countries, they seem to love it. Any any kind of hint to any heritage or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, interestingly, I'd like speaking to people, my, my mum and dad were big into like, the folk scene and a lot of the the big folk artists of like the 70s and 80s retired over there because it, it was so big, you know, Scottish music. Yeah. So maybe there's some kind of link there. Um, aye. So maybe that's maybe that's the reason the Swedes like us. <laughs> how, how was the gig in Sweden? How did that come about? a couple of gigs in Sweden. Just absolutely blagged it. To yeah. Be honest. Um, what even, how did that even go? There was some there Scottish woman. There was a Glasgow, uh, a girl from Glasgow called Rosie who had moved over to Gothenburg. Uh, Gothenburg. And um, she was involved in music and gigs and bands and stuff. And I think, I don't know how I saw it, but she tweeted one day, would anyone be interested in a gig swap? Whether that's England, Scotland, whatever. Cool. To Sweden. Um, and I just fucking just messaged her saying, we're, we're from kind of Ayrshire, and who are you thinking that she had a band called Mojo Madness? The band. They're really nice guys. And we've stayed in touch with them since their, their sound. So we brought them over and they played a Halloween gig in Irvine. Right. In the ship. Uh, in, the, in the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In Irvine, <laughs> upstairs. The ship. I don't know if you've ever been in the ship and upstairs. Nah. It's, I think, probably holds about 100 people. Okay. And there's, I think there's probably about 130 people in it on the night. It was brilliant. Just like, I always kind of, I put on three gigs there over the years and they were always brilliant because it's, you have to be in the room. Mm. There's no like, oh, go downstairs, everybody else. And I think they were just like, what is going on here? Because <coughs> they come over from Sweden, the place was packed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we went over and played Gothenburg in a place called Hasselholm as well, which is one night after another. Brilliant. Just totally blagged it. Like, we're like, what are we going to do here? Callum's, uh, Callum's left handed, so he had to bring his own bass. And Ross, a uh, keyboard player, so he brought his own keyboard. So we just borrowed everybody else's gear. Right, okay. We used their guitars, their amps, pedals. Sean used the kits, cymbals. We didn't bring anything. And kind of vice versa, they'd done the same with us. Yeah. But to a band you don't know, to people you don't know, and I'll just say, just like, if people get very funny with equipment. Like, you know, don't touch my mm. guitar, don't touch my amp or whatever. Or just, like, don't be rude. We just t- completely blagged it. And and yeah. it went down well. Aye, it was great. It was it's kind of it's such an interesting sort of country. You're driving around it and everybody's so polite. I think that's the thing I kind of noticed in the people working in bars and stuff. The first night was great and the second night was a wee bit quieter. And then it just, like, a few folk come in and they were just kind of going wild. Like, proper, like, letting go. And the venue for the second the night venue. was... One of the coolest things I've ever seen. It was like I don't. It just looked like an old house, but it was right on the edge of like a concrete bowl park, skate park. Right. Okay. And it was just like an old porch where the, sort of the kids were just still hanging out and uh-huh. there. And you go in, and it's just like a living room basically, but it's been fucked about into a, a venue. Right. And it was so cool. Like they made us dinner before and a big sort of long table, and it was just the coolest venue I've ever been in my life. Uh, but I you just roam about this house. It's just. They <laughs> looked just like it was free. Open I, to the I don't think they, ch- they charged for gigs. Aye. It, it looked like a squat almost. Yeah, so right. aye, aye. But it was brilliant, really. It was that's cool, cool, something a bit aye. different, yeah. yeah. And the fact that like, they just went out of your way to, like, right, here's your dinner and stuff before. And all that sounds like a kind of. Like, why would you get excited about that? But I know, really but there's something nice about it. Something kind of nice about yeah. it. And <laughs> it does happen here um, because I've seen it happen here to bigger bands. But so yeah, but to accept and bring in someone's like yeah, a smaller group, yeah, exactly, and then treat them with that kind of respect. Exactly. And the the thing with bigger bands that get all done are made for. I'm talking about like touts and stuff. They put like that's probably it's coming out of some someone's mm. overhead. It's a budget somewhere yeah, for that. It's, it's, you know, I don't think that's 
Because I wasn't happy. Was Neil over head of that gig? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 money made. Right. So somebody bought that dinner and, and fed us. It was yeah. brilliant. Because you said they weren't, they weren't even ch- taking like ticket sales for it to make any money. I don't think so. I think people were just walking in. Aye. Yeah. Just boat walking in. Um, ah, it was brilliant. It was a great experience. Uh, but I just completely blagged it. No contacts, no nothing. Just jumped on a flight and boarded the Avian. It was, it was amazing. The flight back, do you remember? Uh, Callum's base got confiscated. He had a big, you know, like a hard case, a thin hard case, and they thought it was a gun. <laughs> 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 the Edinburgh Airport, it comes out, was my base, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, it's been taken for like inspection. So they thought it was like a rifle or something. <laughs> <laughs> or ours as well. I mean, how oh. long does it take to open the thing? I mean, that should, be a, it. that should be cut and dry. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Probably having a shot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's left handed, so. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Could be left handed. Uh, yeah, that was, that was sweet. That was, that was like um, five years ago now. Yeah, it was amazing. I kind of talked about going back over there. And we've kept the contacts, which is good. So I think the opportunity is always there to maybe go back over. But, um, Braincoats, that was the other band we played with. Yeah, Braincoats. Really, coats. really, really, really good. Right, okay. Uh, and they've really Rad-nosing. kicked. I think Mo- Mojo Madness have sort of wrapped up for all of them doing different things. But uh, Braincoats have kicked on. They've released a, a good couple of EPs. I think an album now as well. They're really good. Sort of, kind of OC punk sounded. Right, like okay, yeah. Don't sound Swedish at all, but a really, really good uh, good punk band that we played with. Is it, is it the Hives or something that's Swedish as well? Yeah, I think, I think they're Swedish, Swedish. Aye. I think yeah. they're a big influence of the band Sean's talking about. It's Melancholy, aren't they? Aye, aye. Right. I think they, they recorded their, their EPs and albums with the, one of the members of Melancholy. Yeah, yeah I don't even realise they were Swedish, Melancholy. Yeah, aye. They were the big, uh, one of the big sort of um, songs in... Just a Tony uh, Hawk's classic. Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> What's the song? The best soundtrack No ever. Cigar. No Cigar. Yeah. Right, okay. If you hear it, you'll be like, yeah, I I wouldn't know the name of it, but I'll definitely have heard it if it's on Tony Hawk's. Yeah. So so that that gig in Sweden's led to lasting fans basically, and it's coming up. And I mean, that's the only explanation I can have for it. Um, what about Japan? Have you gigged in Japan yet? Then no. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I think it's one of those things that you end up on a playlist. Yeah. Right. That you get like you end up on a, an alt rock playlist. And it feeds into. And it feeds into. Because I I mean it's kind of amazing. I should have looked at that before I came, but the it goes into towns as well. Oh yeah, right, it goes into like kind of real sort of real detail. What's your biggest? I think Glasgow's the biggest. Glasgow, right? Glasgow's the biggest town. But then it's like an interesting sort of second one. It's it'll be like a few Scottish places and a few English places and a few, a few Irish places, and and amongst it it'll be like Swedish cities, towns. Yeah. Um, I it's, I'll probably find it out, but it's it's quite interesting. I I like that sort of stuff though. Yeah. I really like kind of. I don't know how it's got there, but it's just cool that someone there is listening to it. Yeah, and you forget when you're just looking at a number, like mm. say a thousand views, you're like, okay, it did all right. Yep. But then that's actually a thousand times someone sat down to watch your music. Video. That's Aye. that's crazy. It's amazing. Aye, I know, I know. And folk in Sweden are watching your music video Aye. or sitting listening to it. It's always fascinating to yeah. to think how how somebody got to it and how they relate to it. There was a time we played down in London. There was a guy who came to Paris to, mm-hmm. to come and see us. Inexplicably, I don't know why. That's awesome, <laughs> Again. Yeah. Uh, I never got talking. I think you spoke to him for a while. Do you know that was that was a funny one? We played a gig uh, in Camden, and um, a guy came over who knew the guy that was running the gig, and it was like a mental health awareness night. Uh, okay. Um, and he, the guy, the guy who was running it was Scottish, and he just liked the first album, and he said, "Come down to London, see what you can do." And the story about that is we stopped halfway and we met. Uh, Barry Chuckle. Barry Chuckle. Aye, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a travel lodge. Like, in a travel lodge, like halfway down the road. <laughs> Got a picture of him and everything. Close. Is it Barry, the wee one? The wee guy? I think it's Barry. I can say, where was his partner? Oh, they're, I think they're both. Is it Nigel and no, Barry no, or something? One of them's, one of them's still alive. Oh, what? Anyway, like a bummer. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we went down and we played a gig in Camden. Camden. Yeah. And uh, um, I, a guy came over and he was a, uh, a guy from Paris. And he's like, we've got a song called Jerusalem that we kind of pretty much end every set with going to see the Jerusalem of Salvation both on the first album but they've kind of just always lasted in the set taking them out and like why have we taken them out folk like it mm. and the guy said to me like that <coughs> that song and this is what's kind of funny about like being in our band which I'm not like a big band but you know, just starting out been together a long time he said um, that song uh, came into my life at the perfect time and I, he never never said anything else about that, and I don't know if it was musically. I don't know if it, he liked the riff. I don't know if he liked the, 
whatever. Something I got him through he something or But he came over from Paris to see us. Yeah. yeah I don't know awesome. Paris the one that like right, okay, so all that's lovely. But still but it's still not band isn't it? Yeah. Plus, come right. to see a band from Irvine who have travelled into London mm-hmm. and you've taken the time out for us. So uh, stuff like that kinda happens now, now and again. It's it's always pretty cool. And see when you're talking about certain songs you have in sets, with songwriting, do you write songs that's like, okay, I want to write this because it's a good song musically, or do you write this because this will be good live? Like, is there a difference? Uh, I think, personally speaking, that I've never approached a song to think this is where it's going to go live. I just, it just happens. Yeah. And hopefully I'm happy enough that it's formed. Because mm-hmm. I've written songs over the years that are stuff and I've finished, and we never w- ever write songs quickly. It's always quite laboured and slow. Um, so no, I, I've never thought about it like, I really need a big ending here, or a, a really catchy chorus, or whatever. It yeah, is. the songs are what they are. In terms of, certainly from my perspective, I don't know what you think. No, you write them, they come out the way they come out, and they fit into something after that. Aye. It just depends how it falls. I mean, if we could dictate exactly and get exactly what you wanted out of a song, we'd be far better songwriters. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But, um, uh, and again, there's the fluidity to it, and the uh, sort of genuineness a bit. Just how it develops itself. So, no, there's certainly never any kind of premeditated, you know, Thoughts. we want this type of song. And there's certain songs that come out that probably maybe play once or twice live, and they, they just for one reason or another they don't they don't suit we they, they suit the you know the record better. Mm-hmm. Just listening to it on the record and they have they don't translate as much. But aye, they just come out the way they do and a life of their life of their own really. Aye. And when it comes to writing versus recording versus performing, what's your favorite or favored parts of that process? It's yeah, for me, it's always live. The actual, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, stuff that's just. I think I f- I'm very critical, of like what what I've managed to write and bring to the table and stuff. And I guess you need the rest of them to say, "Oh no, that is that is good." Or you get, you need reassurance. It's a bit of validation. I mean, I saw you. What was the venue? Broadcast. Broadcast, that's right, yeah. yeah. And you've got a group of like fans mm-hmm. um and they're all super into what you guys are doing. Yeah. And it was interesting from my perspective because we'd done some reels um in the lead up to yeah, the yeah. V P dropping for that. And so I'd heard like these sort of twenty, twenty five snippets of songs like yeah. over and over and over. <laughs> and then to be able to listen to the EP for a bit before mm-hmm. the gig and uh, like it just sort of all pieced it together sure. and uh, yeah but to see the, the kind of energy that you guys had and the uh, how the fans interacted with it because there's obviously people there who go to every gig you yeah, do sure, okay. um, so that was really nice to, to see I think yeah. lives are always different uh, even people that know the music well they, they'll, you always get a wee sort of reaction to them like oh right I didn't know you know it's like the, the, there's something there's something that you can't capture mm-hmm. in recording I don't think mm-hmm. especially I mean stupid daft kind of detail we used to record without a click track to try and to <coughs> kinda capture that live energy but even then it's there's something kind of sterile about a record I mean we love recording really really love recording there's something very methodical and very measured about it whereas live you can just go at it and uh, I I think people always they always take a wee, something a wee bit different away to, to live rather than listening to uh, and see if the recording is. the uninitiated and me hmm. what's a click track click track <laughs> is <laughs> aye, that's what I'm talking about getting into the weeds it's basically just like that in your ear when you're playing drums oh so like having a metronome a almost. metronome yep. right okay and you're just so concentrated <laughs> mm. and it sounds like a daft wee minuscule thing but it does you only concentrate on what you're doing rather than an overall ensemble what, other, type what other people are doing and yeah. yeah 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 do you change any of your songs up when you're playing live to yeah. like extend oh, certain yeah. bits and yeah. get the crowd into it and stuff yeah, yeah. we've yeah. played something that maybe too often in recent memory we try and maybe fit a new ending on it or right cool just a yeah play it slightly differently yeah um Especially the, the closers sometimes when we're, we're playing Jerusalem with a sort of extended end but we try and get really heavy on it and uh, change that up a wee bit for the last gig. Yeah, like if you were at the last gig, that, that whole end section, if you stayed to the end, was proper good. 
Might be good. I had to leave. <laughs> <laughs> There's fucking no point in talking about it. Just play, play the video. Um, no, just, about like tennis, a, I think, so yeah, I apologise like, for that. It's like a, it's a, a heavier ending to the original thing. Right. <coughs> kind of reworked and kind of, it, it works. It works well for the end of the set. That's, so that's, that's, that's important. Jerusalem's kind of always in the set. So see, when you're talking about, you were saying you try to capture the feeling alive and you get rid of the click track. But then we, we, we evolved to the click track. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does sound more polished and it's far easier to edit okay. from yeah. Greg's perspective rather than it just being this amorphous blob you're trying to <laughs> fucking yeah. pull into one thing. When you've got a click, you can sort of move things in, in blocks sort of yeah. thing when you're recording. And any wee fuck-ups you've done, yeah, they're easily kind of okay. edited. Saves time. Because I was going to ask, like, where the desire to do that came from because I've been to a couple of gigs, the two that stick out, in terms of being sterile, are the Pixies and Stereophonics. Oh, really? It just sounded like you're playing a CD. Mm -hmm. And I love them both, but it was just a bit flat. Yeah. But I know I definitely know what you mean with the live thing. Is, is it seeing a gig that kind of made you want to do that, or what was it? I, I think it's just a release. I, I've no seen one particular band. I think you, you, for when you're you've a young teenager, you want to just be up on the stage and, yeah. and doing that after like maybe... I mean, you wouldn't even have seen any bands w when you were that age but you see them in whatever was, uh, was about that time 120 minutes Kerrang those kind of channels yeah um, but I it's just for me it's just uh, just if, if you learn the song well you can well enough you can sort of forego the the really concentrating on getting everything right and mm -hmm. just express yourself a wee bit and uh, if you sound cheesy you lose yourself on it yeah I mean, when you're talking about being that age, I know we briefly touched on uh, bands like The Offspring when you were younger and the, the days in the garage. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you talk about that, like how you first started getting into music? Uh, I guess where it all started for, for me and you, anyway. Yep. yep. The Offspring. I think it was like the first proper kind of alternative intro show that they would ever have. And funny enough, he, it's an offshoot of their most poppy s song. So it would be, I think it's Why Don't You Get a Job. Aye. Or mm. Pretty Fly. I think we're like advocates for The Offspring. You know, every every time Andy speaks, it's for talking to the offspring. I love and quite a unique band in that, you know, if you take away the songs that were clearly there just to make them a few quid, yeah, they're. I mean, you look at Americana, you, you take out Pretty Fly for a white guy, you take out Why Don't You Get a Job, and it's just a great, you know, Orange County punk album. Mm -hmm. And um, I, th I think they're probably the gateway for a lot of a lot of people getting into that music, getting into that scene, getting into Pennywise and the SOL and bands before then. Um, yeah, was, the what was the fact that they had a song on MTV and a lot of people saw that and then said, oh, I'll get that single. For us, we've, we got a single at the Barrowlands, an old tape. Yeah. Uh, I think the old dodgy tape stand. And we've talked about that recently. Um, the two tapes I bought that day was that Americana mm -hmm. uh, tape and DJ John, the launch. Right, okay. <laughs> so that was a fork in the road, big time fork in the road. It could have been... <laughs> DJ sets yeah. um, but I after hearing uh, so you go on you want to hear this single where do you sing them at school and then you hear like the, the song Americana or staring at the sun yeah. or something like that and it's uh, I think that was the B-side from, from like the, one of the singles Aye. staring at the sun yeah it's a good tune yeah. and when you get the albums you're, you're looking at you know you would pour over these things like back when you used to get CDs and stuff and you would yeah. go on through the thank yous and who their influences were and and the, the Offspring had that label, Nitro Records, which they would release uh, compilation tapes and they would have, you know, 20 yeah. bands you hadn't heard of mm -hmm. on that. And then it's just an ongoing... That, that was a big thing. Uh, the, the singer, uh, Dexter Holland, owned Nitro Records. Mm -hmm. His own kind of DIY punk right. label. And AFI were signed to... Uh, uh, yeah, got AFI, the Vandals. The Vandals. Yep. And I can't remember now, but like loads of sort of... And then you're like, oh, we're, we're a fan of these guys now as well. Yeah. But I, I mean... It's not a bad. I know we do end up talking about them a little bit. It's not a bad band to start with. It's yeah. like you just, and then you sort of work back the way as well. Because yeah. like, you want to buy everything that they've released. Yeah. And the further back you you, you go, it's more, it's more mm. and more punk as you go into. Because they're obviously kill self, the president. Self titled. I know, like the mm. first albums, Tehran and all that's like that pure political very, stuff. Very yeah. political. But you start. Uh, why don't you get a job or pretty five for the white guy? Yeah. That's that's your in. Yeah, it gets you in, and then you kind of get sick of it. And there's loads of folk, I suppose, that are. Uh, I, I mean, this Green Day will be another band for folk. Mm. Yeah, like that, you know, um, 
and maybe slightly like younger than us, but like um, American Idiot was like, I think probably a lot of folks who were into rock music a bit younger than us. But right, yeah. that was a, a it's a monster an album, huge, <laughs> like yeah, worldwide. Yeah. But like Green Day again, you go back. I mean, they're touring just now next year. It's like twenty years ago to them, ten years or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not really meant to bury you, I don't know. But they'll be a gateway for that, and it's just it's the association, and then all of a sudden, like you're into heavier music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's like a gateway. Yeah, and then you listen to it's not just punk anymore because it's like a kind of subculture of music and skateboarding, and it's you end up starting listening to Rage Against the Machine, and yeah, and then you start getting into like a bit of metal stuff and. It's just then, well, that's us, that's what we like now. Yeah. Uh, we just like alternative music. Not just alternative, but, but at that, that moment, I think that we were obsessed with anything kind of aye, rock. Aye. So how do you approach that, like, as a as a band now, and it's, we're past the days of, like, you get a CD and you can really, you know, you, it's more of a connection to the band when you get a CD or a tape, whatever, and you're looking into all their stuff, and now it's just all, like, online. Is that, aye. is that, like, a bit of a disappointment for you, or how do you, like, approach trying to get that connection with for our own Listeners. music, uh, I mean, we've always released like CDs. I think uh-huh. the last we've, we've not actually got any physical release of songs or since then. We just switch as the EP. Um, I'd like to, yeah, but it's it's hard. I mean, it's difficult because we're sort of like self finance everything. We've never crowdfunded anything, and that's not a dig at anyone that crowdfunds. It's just that it's just the way we are, and it's mm-hmm. we've always everything that we put into the band. <coughs> if we do end up needing anything from a gig or whatever, goes straight back in. Like, it's. I would like to have a like a, an EP on vinyl or something, but it's, it's mm-hmm. expensive. And yeah. The problem is short order stuff. So like when you're ordering like vinyl from, I mean you can get it, but it's it's quite quite dear. And there was some technical thing as well. Dick, uh, Greg was saying he's from Earth Cleared Up and this kind of stuff. That the album we were talking about getting vinyls for the album, but it was slightly too long, and he said it would actually drop the quality if you had. There's a way to compress it. Right. On, on uh, you know, the songs so they all fit in the vinyl. That makes absolutely no sense to me. I'm no, I'm technologically minded, minded, but he said that the, there is a drop in quality when you put too many songs on, on vinyl. There's apparently. people who know Pro- about producers sound. Producers know. <laughs> uh, I know if the, if the directors are close together. There you go. Uh, right. That's why I see when you get to like. The Who's that voice coming track. through? <laughs> 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 um, when the, you get to like the last track on the side, oh. that's why. Which ironically is the bit that people like because it's sort of that nostalgic kind of yeah. vinyl. Ah, kind yeah. of ah, well, there we go. We've learned That's something right. this evening. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'd, we'd love sort of like physical stuff. Because like we do, like, like see the posters we get made for gigs and stuff. It's it's always, uh, I don't know whether it's just a pride thing or whatever, but I always want to have the band looking as professional as possible. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. That's t-shirts or posters. Like a lot of effort goes into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> none left as well. But it's just, it's just, just sold out. The last um, two. The last two. <laughs> the, uh, that was the, de- the defective ones, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Greg slipped in that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I chose it. <laughs> <laughs> Sniffs it every week. <laughs> While I'm here. I don't even know what I was saying. Oh yeah, so like professionalism. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to go back to being professional. Uh, no, it's just there's a pride thing involved. I want I want people to come to the gigs, and I always print off some like A3 posters of of the shows, and put they're never there at the end of the night. Don't know who takes them, but I leave a bunch out. But t-shirts and stuff, I always try to get good graphic designers and folk we like to work with to kind of push the boat out a wee bit because it's I don't know we don't gig loads, so it means that when there's something coming up, it's c- hopefully more of an event, it's like a thing that like, we went to Cullen, like in Glasgow and like at Edinburgh or whatever. Um, and there's a, a decent poster attached to that. And it's just, I think as well, since we started putting our own gigs on, like um, when you choose bands to play with you on the night, s- some of them have said to me, Oh, this like the first poster we've been involved with, or like, and that's not like trying to brag or anything, but I think a lot of promoters, if, if, it, we try and give like kind of younger bands like shots mm-hmm. on gigs because we've been there before and we, we didn't get shots all the time. So just to see the kind of professionalism aspect of things, like and, like proper um, artwork and all that sort of stuff, um, like printed wristbands, sh- stupid wee small details, but with the band's names on it. Mm-hmm. Just that it means a lot to like a younger band then, uh, and a 
think it's I think overall it makes a difference. I don't think it makes a difference at all. That's cool. I know we touched on that the last time of just to talk about it again, like when you said it was laboured with like the taking your time with with the songwriting process and making sure everything's perfect, you get good artists and like cool graphic designers for your posters so your fans know like when we're touring it's gonna be good and everyone's gonna be like t- top tier and polished, nothing's an afterthought. Yeah. I think that's really cool though. Like uh, Yeah. So where where are you seeing that come from? You you're saying it might be pride, but is it more just kinda what you like in other bands and you're trying to replicate that or Yeah, I f- I don't I think um or O C D Control Freak. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, I I've always liked fans artwork and, and I think if you have something uh, everyone have this in mind a, a band's album that you just it's, it's imprinted in your brain yeah. mm-hmm. you enjoy the artwork so much th- and then you go and find out who'd done it and what else they've done and all this and you go and so you go obviously down a rabbit hole but I think if you have a poster that's striking it just it resonates almost immediately mm-hmm. and people associate it with that gig it's kind of like how you used to get album artwork and the, you'd open up the CD from a CD or yeah. vinyl and you'd have like pictures of the bands or yeah. just the artwork and there was yeah. like lots of different variations yeah I, I mean it's always been important to me and if it, even if it's just as like basic as someone saying oh, that's a really cool poster yeah but they, they've they've saw it and it's just it's like i said it's resonated with them so we've worked with folk over the years and it's it's important to me for sure that the band looks probably more obviously professional but like to a higher level than they actually are if that makes sense, I we, don't know if you, that's you see a band and you go, oh, well, they must be, you know, like this is like a proper profession, and and we are to a degree, obviously, I do under- understand that, but almost looks like we're better than we are, if you know. What <laughs> I, mean. I don't know if it's necessarily that you're coming across as better than you are because you're great, <laughs> but it's there's a there's a level of attention like to detail there that maybe would be more in keeping with like. A, a larger group or a larger S- someone with finance and yeah that's I think that's yeah a bit of yeah no I agree I agree I think that's <coughs> a sort of it's the likes of that Sweden thing people will look at it and go who the fuck knows that guy in Sweden <laughs> or well they must have like a touring agent or they must have like a, a European touring agent they've got yeah. one for Sweden because that's how you get gigs abroad is that you have a booking agent who've got who's got connections with venues and promoters overseas and they get you in mm-hmm. but we we don't obviously. So I've messaged <laughs> someone on Twitter saying, can you send a band near me, come see me? It's like a bit of that Scot- Scottish mentality, like, I don't need all that, I'm, like, I'm going to do it myself, and I'm going to do it to the same standard as Other you people. with your record label. Yeah. I think a lot of that comes with just putting your own gigs on, mm-hmm. whereas, like, a lot of that's just taken care of if you're, if you're with a promoter. You just leave it in the hands of somebody else, and you, you show up on the night. Hopefully you've sold enough tickets and you play. Whereas, when PJ started putting on his, his own gigs, you know, it was, it was a lot more control. In, in your hands and uh, you, you can just find you know these wee things to make it a, a, a better experience for everybody mm. I think that was you know, I imagine though party. that you wouldn't want to give up that level of like detail and control within like having that within the group that you wouldn't want to outsource that to someone to say just handle it for us aye like well I, I don't know if it's worked against us as well <laughs> yes, I mean it's good that these the last few years of gigs that with PJ putting the, putting the gigs on have been our best gigs hands down um, but I think maybe you, 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 you come out of the radar of the, the big sort of promoters in Glasgow and get less and less support slots which is that's what it is mm-hmm. you know but we're quite happy that the way it's worked out in that you've more control over your own gigs and the gigs that you do play are, are much better uh, than if, if you were just tagging on like doing a support slot or whatever yeah. but then again it's you know it's double edged sword you, know, you get more support slots and more exposure that's that's what it is you know but again we're, we're few and far between but the, the ones that are there are good yeah that's mm-hmm. cool it's like don't beg for a seat at someone's table we'll make, make your yeah, own table yeah, yeah. That's exactly I like that the other place where the attention to detail shines through is in the music videos that you guys produce there's a well you've got one for St Andrews coming out on St Andrews Day. Yeah. <laughs> what word, What date is St Andrews Day? This thirty. It is the thirtieth. You don't know when St Andrews Day is. Shocking! I knew that. Yes, 100%. Did you? Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know now. So for Scots. Um. So yeah. I didn't know until last week. <laughs> 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 no, it's it's a good bit of like ridiculous marketing, isn't it? Just like we'll. we'll well why not? Like, well, why like, it was close anyway. So yeah. When we shot it, we shot it two weeks ago now. 
and it was always like, "Do you hear that wheezing? A dying man." Um, <laughs> <laughs> we shorted two weeks ago, and um, it was just like, a, well, "We'll just aim for the end of November, and hopefully we'll have it edited and stuff." And we had, we finished the, done the last one through on Monday, so it's Sunday or Monday there. Um, that's it done. So you've got a final cut. It's, it's pretty done, much yeah, good to go. 4K, beautifully. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And how long was the shoot? And like, where was everyone in the band like there? Uh, two days. Two days. Two days. Yep. So we done all the kind of storyline, sort of action stuff, and one full day as a long day. But we done it all in one day, just because of budget. Like, it's sh- so we're shooting, especially like we shot up at Dim Karen, which is like a like Dim Karen medieval village, which they built like a kind of fort. So they were good enough to let us film there. Um, we had an in, so like w- one of the stuntmen in the in the film was part of like the clan, I think they call it up there. Okay. Um, so he got us in for the day, but I was like, right, we're shooting for a certain amount of hours. I don't know whether it was a bit longer, but um, so we've done all that storyline stuff on the Saturday, and then we've done band stuff and a wee bit more storyline on the Sunday. So just over two days. So it's quite kind of condensed, yeah, and pressured. But um, I think it looks brilliant. It's, it's probably it's definitely the most ambitious video we've done yeah i was gonna say i can't think of a scottish music video that would top it it's absolutely it's nuts yeah, yeah. it's quite uh, it's i mean can you talk us a little bit through the kind of story line behind it because this will obviously this is going to go out after the fact sure, so sure. Not well, giving obviously it away. i mean the songs in andrew um lyrically uh it's, it's kind of going back to sort of pictish times where um he was a, a pictish king who was about to have a, have a battle with i think some english who came up Sort of story <laughs> and kind of overwhelming odds. <coughs> Northumbrians. Yeah, Northumbrians. Yeah. There you are, bastard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, he sort of the story goes he, he prayed to St Andrew and he was sort of saying that he was like he was a patron saint of Scotland. And again, the story goes that he saw a salt eye on the sky right. in the clouds. And this is this is the story. Anyway, he fought and and won. Yeah. So how do you make that into a video? Yeah. Where, like you don't have. 300 extras that are going to be able to <laughs> and get fuck all CGI, so there's, there's not going to be a big battle. So how do you condense the story into good and bad and mm-hmm. a bit of stuff in the middle? And it's just, I think, it's how we managed to do it. It's quite well. Because we've got the element of using a few stunt guys who know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. So instantly it looks like that. What they call Combat International. Combat That's Combat the, International. the right. name of the... The, the group up there in Dunkirk. Yeah. 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 Cool. So Stuart, the director, knows him quite well. So he kind of choreographed everything. Brian, who's the sort of one of the two main guys in it, is a friend of mine that was an outlaw king. So he's got a wee bit of kind of experience with that. And then Rabba Fleck, who's obviously done big. Big ass. Big. No, that's not it. No, no. <laughs> not no, what's his name? <laughs> I don't know what he's called. He was a gay guy and still gay. Oh, was he? He yeah, was yeah. that. Right, okay. Well, I was mixed up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> But he's, he's Mick. That's Mick, his name. Mick. 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 Yeah. Rabbi Athlete's been a number of your music videos now. Been all of them. All of them. Oh, oh, one which was just a, a band performance. Yes, yeah, uh, City Eternal, which we filmed in Butte yeah. in the summer. Um, it wasn't in that. It was just a performance one. But so Rab's like the the, the big bad guy, which is it's kind of funny because that's what he is in a lot of films. He's in. typecast. <laughs> but um, he's never really been a big bad guy in any of the videos, really. To be honest, no, I don't think so. So it was, I think he enjoyed it, and obviously he's got. A, obviously, look into Rab's history. He's done loads of combat stuff. And did he? D- I had a quick scout about an internet mm-hmm. before we came in. Um, did he um, have a shot at the heavyweight title in for Britain? Uh, I think he was. We uh, don't buy. He was a heavy w- heavyweight boxer. Yeah, he, he had started boxer up your well. knuckle. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, he's like an urban legend. Yeah, and yeah. beyond that, he's done very well. Um, in films, mm. some of the films he's been in, Gangs in New York, Alexander, just layer cake. really a uh, layer cake, big budget films. Right, okay, yeah. And uh, we ended just, I think my uncle knew him, kind of half knew him. I think he flung him down the stairs at some <laughs> pub, <laughs> but they were they were pally after, so he he gave us his number and we just started for there. I have a very nervous conversation with him <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> in some pub, and he was it was one of the ones you sat down and then. All we done all night was talk about films. Just the biggest film buff, mm. and he, he likes his boxing as well. He's thinking about that, but he's he's been so good with us. You know, I mean, could have told us to fuck off to the beginning. <laughs> you know, after being in Layer Cake and whatever, yeah, I'd probably know that long after being in Layer Cake than some yep. wee teenagers coming up to ask you to be in a, a music video, maiming the words. I think he had just finished uh, Doctor Who. 
and ah, he was in Doctor Who. Yeah. 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 Done this like a kind of guest episode, but in Doctor Who, and then you just asked him to be in a video. That's quite a roster of things he's. That was crazy. Them. I mean, the, his big break was the big man. I think he was in the big man. Liam Neeson. Yeah. It's a great film. Liam yeah. Neeson, yeah. Billy Connolly, and stuff. And right. Uh, Liam Neeson's like a unlicensed, sort of to do with unlicensed hockey. Aye. Okay. In a kind of underworld in Glasgow, and um, Rab's the guy that Liam Neeson fights. Okay. But it's it's voted like one of the most sort of brutal fights in any film. See if you know, look at his top hundred fight scenes in a film. It goes on for ages, and right. it's like it's tiring watching it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like horrible. It's like bare knuckle fighting. Yeah. And they're fighting in a kind of underground sort of big car park where it's a circle of guys who are betting, obviously, on it. Um, it's, uh, and then he ends up at the hospital. And it's good. It's a really good film. It's called The Big Man. The Big Man. Yeah. It's uh, the guy who's William... Is it Michael Venn? Yeah, Michael Venn. Right, okay. Film. I haven't even heard of that. There's uh, loads of those films about in the sort of 80s and 70s, the kind of gritty Scottish films. I don't know. what They just seem to fall by the wayside. Yeah. There's, there's so many good films that are in that period. Uh, and Rab would have been in a few of them. Uh, oh, was Billy Connolly in The Big Man? Or was that no, he was in the big man and, yeah. and down amongst the big boys. Down among the big boys, the which boys. Rab was in as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm just worried. Worried I get battered calling him Big Ennis now. <laughs> 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 Need to avoid that. That's uh, Clive, <laughs> Clive Russell in it. Ah, he's another Scottish guy. Right? Mm -hmm. Aye, don't, don't know him. <laughs> 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 and so was it the sort of slight family connection there that helped, or would you think it was the Durban connection that really cemented it? Ah, both. I was, as I say, my uncle Ross got the number for him. He'd mentioned his name. They were the acquaintances at the time. What was it? I think I, I was kind of half assed training at his old boxing gym that he right. was training in. And that, well, we kind of brought that up with him, and that was another kind of reason to, for him to say, This guy's no just a wee fanny. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, once we get talking, it was just all films. Like, there was no mention of anything else. We just talked about films all night. And um, the easiest guy in the world to talk to. No intimidating at all. Intimidating, kind of going up to meet him. But the friendliest guy you'd ever meet, I don't think he was like that all his life, but he's always got a past, but yeah, really, really nice guy and helped us out a lot over the years. No, it's a cool cameo to keep going as well, to have that. Ah, it's a good through line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's nice. And like Sean said, just it's a great guy to work with. Like, see on the day, like he'll say things, and especially when, especially in this video, there's, there's a bit of, a, quite a bit of fighting. He's done all that. Mm-hmm. So Ofi officially and unofficially, <laughs> he's done the fake fighting. That's what I mean. So yeah, like how to throw a punch, how to sell it. So mm -hmm. it looks professional it again. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, he's, he's diving around for filming a couple of weeks ago. Like Rab's in his he must be in his seventies. Coming up to it, that would yeah, be at least. Nice. And he's diving the ground, rolling around, and like he just like just goes for it, hundred percent. But Ryan is is mostly fighting them. He's telling them just things and wee tips and all that sort of stuff. Just like it's gold mm -hmm. to someone that hasn't done that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I mean, we pride ourselves on, on trying to release good music, whether it, even because it's not awful. We want it to have an impact. Um, funnily enough, we've done videos quite regularly for over the last year. I think we've done a video for Rovers and last this time last year, and then City Eternal was just performance. It, uh, we filmed at Mount Stuart and Butte, and then obviously this. So we've done three within a year, which mm -hmm. is quite a lot. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's definitely something I personally like it and I keep thinking it's just it's a different avenue for a bit of kind of creative input so are you the main driving force behind like okay this is you're like scouting locations and say for example St Andrews obviously maybe not the choreography of the fight but are you yeah. picking the spots and uh, modifying the story to fit and all I that I wouldn't really want to take credit for that I think it's, that is a kind of that is a PJ PJ and Stuart the guy that does it is Stuart uh, Breedner who, who does the videos is like he, PJ and him sort of bang everything together and we come up with most of the, the ideas uh, and flesh it out really um, <laughs> <laughs> a bit bashful now <laughs> yeah, we, there's, there is a, there is other input there for sure but I like I spend time on trying to get like a location or he likes a Mount Stuart in Butte yeah um, which I don't know if you've ever been there it's incredible absolutely amazing no it's not something I've visited see that I hadn't heard of it at all when we were over North Sea just for a day or it's like a hidden gem it's yeah. honestly like it's, it's this big gothic mansion the, the guy that owned the guy that built it very interesting fella his like you know Michael said his dad basically discovered or developed all the coal in Wales oh, so he nice. basically founded Cardiff and he was and his son inherited all his wealth and he was the richest man on earth at one point yeah but he was he was nearly like he was like a 
I love a team like he was into his arts and he was into, into all strange stuff like the occult and like he converted to Catholicism which was like unheard of back in the Victorian days it was like mm-hmm. a black a black mark against your name but he was just fascinated with architecture and listening to some of the tours when we were filming there we caught sort of like a tail end of some of the tours even the, the detail like there's wee cut crystal in the ceiling that corresponds with the zodiac and it like shines onto the floor at a certain time of day and Aye. it's so it's so so cool um and this was just his, his passion project and just absolutely amazing it's just been sort of like kept like it's pristine uh-huh. it is pristine honestly like jaw dropping you, you need to go see it sounds like we're working for him but <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, the thing is as well i mean i contacted him on the off chance they may let us use it because it's like the people that do hire it there was like a Russian oligarch hired it to turn it into Harry Potter land for his son. So he sailed up on like a fucking like super yacht mm-hmm. and hired it out, obviously paid him whatever. And they let him have that was the last use of it before us. Right. Venue. But prior to that it's like like a proper prestigious like wedding venue. Yeah. Like yeah. You can hire the entire building. Um and I was talking to him and I was like, Is there any chance you you'd let us film in here? And he was like, Well, what is in the film and thinking like we're trying to play some acoustic guitar and we just want like this nice music. backdrop I was like no it's a kind of alt rock band we're going for a brawl quite, 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 <laughs> <laughs> quite loud but the video for that is quite quite serene to be fair like the, the chapel in there is incredible that's cool. that was for City Eternal City Eternal yeah, yeah. yeah. that's um, but again almost blagging it just said was there any way and talked them into a position where like well we're an unsigned band which is true and uh, we just love the opportunity and all that sort of stuff and they were sound they let us just they said just film if you don't ask you don't get mm-hmm. you know and the day we were filming alan cummins walking around filming like a documentary <laughs> right okay <laughs> well, obviously i think it's like the really old thing uh, yeah. so it was into we um what was this what's it called Weems bay right which is like for some award-winning train oh, that's station. nice as well it's that's like nice. a pure old victorian station there that's quite cool um and then so we were on the ferry with all his like kind of documentary crew <laughs> and so we were both filming just like in just walking by each other, it's kind of kind of funny. It's cool, but um, I it's just kind of blagged it to be honest. But they said to me like nothing's been filmed in here like that. Mm-hmm. Some BBC stuff, Netflix and stuff would film there for like period stuff, but they can't rely on the, the ferries. Right. right. They never, they never want to come over. No. I was like, uh, staff room and we were on the boat with yeah. uh, Spring Watch going to film the puffins and oh we were right going to yeah. take photos of them trying to get in like the background of shots <laughs> with big, uh, what's his name, Hugh or something? It's, Hugh uh, Edwards. it's the Welsh fella. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, was yeah. It, wasn't it Michaela? No, no she wasn't was there. Hugh or something. It was just, uh, I've got, I can't remember at all but it was I just, I think it's Edward. It was just a big Welsh. Is that the news guy? Oh no, yeah, that's the news guy. Chiseled. Yeah, it wasn't him. Jeez, <laughs> yeah, r- delete that bit out. It's Hugh something. <laughs> the news guy? <laughs> Oh, uh, the news anchor that was caught. You can't what was he doing? He was just I getting on with some young boys. Uh, yeah, sending photos. That's sort of painful. He was paying for photos. Uh, for photos. Nothing too bad. Uh, and I just <laughs> said we were overtaking <laughs> photos. <laughs> Fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Hugh Grant was in the boat with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roman pigeons. I, when I when I watched your uh, City Eternal video, I watched it a couple of times, but it was class. But uh, the the video that came on after was. Frightened Rabbit Die Like a Rich Boy and it was the polar opposite because it's one guy with a guitar and this like abandoned broken windows like mm-hmm. garden centre thing but it was the total opposite but both like class songs but it was the such a good video the um, first time we met Stuart the director he says there's two two videos bands can do there's wankers in the woods <laughs> and wanker, wankers in like an abandoned building yeah. <laughs> and like there are so many bands you do you do look at that they're in the woods or they're in like a... Which we've done. Which we have done. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even judging How, it. how do you do it for low budget? Like I, I said, exactly. Go look for something. You go do it where it's free. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, aye, that's true. We've, got, we've done both. <laughs> Funny, immediately after seeing it, we filmed the video in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's your budget? I don't have a budget. We're going to the woods. Wankers like. in the woods. <laughs> what, was, uh, what was your first music video that you, you made? Uh, for Salvation. Salvation, right. Which, again, is talking about like songs. Salvation, generally speaking, is in the set and has just always lasted because mm-hmm. it's probably the best sing-along song in our set right. think. and it's probably the oldest proper like 2012 or something like that so it's a f- and it was written before that obviously I did that before that right. so it's still around but aye that was what Sean's talking about going to meet Rab 
I met with Hub and Urban and talked him through it. And in the first video, he has to learn the lyrics to the song. Because mm. he's walking up and sort of miming the lyrics. It's kind of amazing to see it again. I think it was after, I can't remind who done it, but Bob Hoskins was in a video. Some kind oh, of London right, yeah, yeah. music thing. And it was, he was kind of walking along the Thames, kind of mouthing this sort of London kind of album. I think it was that. Was it that? Or Jamie P or something like that. I don't right. know, I remember that. Yeah. Sheila. That was exactly <laughs> And uh, I thought that looked really, really cool. They were doing playing out the old music. I want to say that we had completely bumped it, but we did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll be filing any lawsuits. No yeah. money to get to the general. Yeah. Are there any bands with like music videos and stuff that you that like inspire you and they're like a target tier of quality? I suppose there's some unobtainable ones. Yeah. Who's that who's ob- unobtainable? That Ramstein are pretty good uh, videos. Oh, okay. that, that, that video. Um, who was it? Uncle with Tom York singing on it. Oh yeah. And it's the old the, the kinda the guy who's obviously getting the fishers are walking along the road and they keep getting hit by the car. And at the very end the climax of the song he stands in the middle of the, the road and the hit, a little lorry hits him and it just like crumbles around him and he just stays completely have you ever seen that video? Nah, no, nah, that sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. No one we kept what kind of again trying to you know why I say steal ideas but yeah, inspiration's going to come from somewhere. <laughs> Take There's a great yeah. protest, the hero um, music video. I can't remember the song. And it's based on um, the monkeys for um, The Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. And kind of The Wizard of Oz, it, it, the first half of the film's sep- sepia tone. And then when they get into you know, Ozland, whatever that is, like the, the, the Technicolor comes in. Yeah. So first half of the music video is them just doing shite jobs and they're dressed as the monkeys for the Wizard of Oz and uh, when the music kicks in at the very end it's just uh, it's neon colour it's amazing right okay I always really want to try something like that I think we we kind of tried to do that for the first one a wee bit but um, no quite managed to capture that magic but those th- those two are my favourite colour videos you can do that with the podcast but when he starts telling that story we'll change it into colour yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just so it gets better I always like the I know it's Coldplay but see the scientist video when he's Oh, moving back, forwards, backwards, miming backwards. it backwards, man. That's ah, yeah, mind blowing. Cool, I don't know if he was the first one to do that, but that always stuck in my head. It's just there's, amazing. There's effort. videos that you like that are just amazing videos that, that you remember, obviously. But um, what's the one Christopher Walken done? The Fat Boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's cool. dancing. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Uh, I'm great. sure I have. I Fat Boy Sons. Yeah. Incredible, man. So I'm at Rock Ness. It was one of the best so performances good. I've ever seen. But yeah, I think, I think, I, I don't know about like achieving this, but like, I was always impressed. I thought Ramstein video was fucking incredible. Aye. I remember seeing um, Sauna in Spain. Remember that? Aye, aye. And like the, it's like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, but they're down and they're mining. Right. And it's just <laughs> I just remember seeing uh, Carol Wyndham and the singer just drilling. I was just like, what? Aye. What the fuck is? It's so it'll be the first time you really heard any kind of heavy music with well in a foreign language. Oh. Uh-huh. And obviously German, pure guttural. Yeah, really, yeah, especially yeah. the way he sings. It's just amazing to see this whole other world. Yeah. Uh, Music out there in Europe. They obviously spend like so much money on their videos, incredible. But yeah, I, I, I don't think any of that were like, oh, I want to try and kind of replicate that because mm-hmm. that is impossible to be fair. So you just try and get the, the highest quality. Mm-hmm. You want something that looks like you've spent 50 grand and you've spent five. Yeah. That's and that's always the goal for me anyway. Mm-hmm. And not to say that they look 50 grand, but I think the quality just, it does. There's a level of quality that's yeah, there for absolutely, sure. Yeah, yeah. For sure. That's good to know, anyway. See, when it comes down to creating the videos, the music, writing, or performing, does there, like, do any of the bands or you guys have, like, protocols or rituals you go through to get into a, a headspace to, to do these things, or, um, or is it more free-flowing than that? Just especially writing, it'll just start with an idea, just like a kind of, for me, it'll just be like a, like a, a riff or a part of the chords or something and then kind of builds around that if you know what I mean and I think, I think we've been asked that question loads about like who that starts and who's involved and how do you write and it's it's kind of sometimes different every time mm-hmm. um, I don't know if it's, it's especially when I'm trying to come up with something and then I speak to Ross and kind of that we've spoken about this before we kind of pair off sometimes like Sean and Greg will write some stuff and I'll write stuff and Ross will write stuff for me and it's just bouncing off kind of ideas. But it, for me, it always starts just on the acoustic guitar. And then 
it's always music first and the lyrics after as well. Uh-huh. So it's never went, I want to write a song about this subject and then the music will come after <coughs> it. Right, it's okay. Never been that way for me. It's yeah. kind of just the same way. Yeah. I think any, any, you see sitting down with a guitar in your lap trying to write something that's the most interminable yeah. thing <laughs> on earth. It's like the Father Ted scene where him and, him and Dougal <laughs> play the fucking note. <laughs> but um, any kind of half decent idea I think germinates just when you're no thinking about anything you're yeah. mm-hmm. driving or and I think um, especially for me like social media and like having a phone in your pocket has almost just destroyed that mm. like yeah. you're never alone with your own thoughts anymore no you're, you're, you're driving there's always music on or a podcast or it's always yeah. it's very and rare at, at you get night, silence now at night in your bed you would uh, probably be where like 70% of your ideas come from whereas it's so easy to just flip your phone open and just be constantly stimulated by nothing yeah but uh i would say just finding the time to turn everything off and just just listen to your own thoughts and you know that's when things come up so where, where it might be a theme or a lyric or just you get a wee melody in your head and then you go back to guitar and kind of flesh it out but i that's i think that's the best the best way to do it i think there's some craft work or something like that they're, they're kind of famous for going away to some cabin out, out in Germany and, and no having any music at right. all for like a couple of weeks and uh, then they would come back and try and write and I think there's, there's something to be said for that just being all completely alone with your mm-hmm. own thoughts Yeah. and because I'm no like I, I write songs on guitar but I'm not a great guitar player and my brain's a better guitar player than I mm-hmm. physically <laughs> can you know <laughs> put together so that way when you've got an idea in your head then you can maybe take it to Greg or try and flesh it up ham fistedly mash it out yourself um, yeah, that's the best way to do it I think it's interesting to see that I was listening to um, Matthew McConaughey on a, a podcast the other morning whilst I was driving <laughs> wasn't my phone thoughts but he was talking about <laughs> kind of what you were saying there and, and there's he takes I think it's his wife's help you need to go away now and like spend some time by yourself and he'll go away for you know, I don't know 10, 12 days and Sorry, it's, it's, it's nice when you're in that <laughs> position you can do that <laughs> you can just afford to do that but uh, and have no kind of outside yeah. he's got a, has to go walk to the top of a hill to get a phone signal check in the wife and kids but apart mm-hmm. from that he sits with a journal and writes or mm-hmm. sleeps or kind of like almost a bit sensory deprivation aye aye but that's yeah we're all bombarded with so much crap now that's of so little value to us yeah Aye. But we're hooked on it. I yeah, remember yep. the, the first time we went to Ardgour where we recorded up near Fort William. Uh-huh. <coughs> um, it's got better over the years for signal and stuff, mm-hmm. but the first time we went, it was just like... Yeah. It's like a black spot. I not even think about using a phone. Using a phone. There's something quite nice about it, but though. That's what I was going to say. Like, that was c- because we run our own business, it's harder now. Yeah. But back then, it was just like, oh, you're away for four days. No one's going to miss you. Like, don't, don't call us. Then you can't call. Yeah. But it was kind of funny to begin with Aye. and then you're just like right it's kind of like the best possible environment to be in to write music or to sort of to record because when we go up i think we always end up adding stuff mm-hmm. and changing stuff especially that first time like went up totally unprepared head up with arse didn't know what we were doing a couple of songs weren't even finished and you're talking about your four days no even four probably three to once everything's set up yeah. to, <laughs> to really get this out and the fact that you're up there and it's a complete isolation you end up kind of coming up with stuff that you, you wouldn't you wouldn't otherwise do like like the entire lyrics for one half of your song was written up there just kind of in 30 minutes just going a wee walk around yeah and you're looking at up at like ben nevis who's mm. quite visible for there and you're looking up again and you're like Arthur nevis just it's incredible it's a special place yeah, yeah. It's incredible it's weird like like you're saying without the internet you can get back to like true creativity and you're coming up with ideas but at the same time it probably helps a lot of people learning how to do stuff like super quick that might have taken years Definitely. before uh-huh. like big marty shorts i'm sure we joked about him last time yeah and the guitar and stuff like that so much you can learn quickly but then you need to have that discipline to just shut off it's that uh, it's the balance of uh like filling up the tank just mm-hmm. full of different uh different art you know different music books, whatever, fill it up your creativity as much as possible and then just shutting off to think about it mm. or to subconsciously think about it. Um, 
that's a good way of looking at it filling like up the tank and then yeah yeah, yeah that's cool and what are you saying <laughs> how, are, how are your good time yeah, time wise this evening no problem we do it we all need to be out it's 10 to 8 by the way but yeah. we all need to be out by 9 because we're quite, quite tight bound nobody wants to listen to us for two hours <laughs> what kind of guitars have you got and what's the acoustic uh, it's a Taylor right okay Taylor guitar um, I know we did play it as well it's big a baby big baby it's all by it's, it's always one of those things that I think I've never had this because Probably because I'm not a great guitarist. So like Greg, for example, who is a really good guitarist, has like six, seven guitars. Mm. Really? So it's like an obsession, like, you need to buy a new guitar, you need to get another guitar, even though you've got... Is that because there's differences between I certain... D- I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose if I was a much better guitarist, maybe I would want... Can appreciate different guitars. Probably slightly different Aye, different tones, tones and how it feels and plays, but I've got one... Gu- no, I've got two guitars, but I've had a guitar for 20 years, um, and I bought a Telecaster, like... 12 years ago and that's all I've ever used mm-hmm. and I've never really wanted to go and buy another one no. but recently I've kind of I, I, I would love I love I would love an, an amazing acoustic guitar imagine being able to go and spend a good couple of grand on an acoustic guitar but yeah. I just think the clarity of like a really good acoustic guitar probably would sound better than any guita- electric guitar to me yeah don't know if that's because we're getting older and I'm listening to like less heavy s- stuff when I, I was when I was right. older but there's uh, something about like an amazing an acoustic guitar, just that sort of clarity, that sound. I've been thinking about that recently. <laughs> <laughs> Starting to just think about it's it. Coming up to Christmas. <laughs> what was that? We what was that? We tool you got for making acoustic sound? Like, was it you? I used to have an acoustic. Set an amp. Pe- I used to stick have an it inside and outside. I used to have an acoustic pedal. Oh, like maybe. Is it Kaz? Oh. There's like a magnet you put inside your guitar, and it'll be a, like a little block, and then all of a sudden, all your guitars just sound amazing. They've got this rich sound, and it amazing. comes out like an amp. You get it in America. Yeah, the thing is that like I can play guitar, obviously a bit. I don't know anything about the technical side of yeah. guitars or amps, which is infuriating to Greg and <laughs> the, the band. Like, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I've got the same amp for fifteen <laughs> years as well, and it's like Greg's got a pedal board that's probably uh, who knows how much it was made by NASA. <laughs> I know it's huge, and even Callum, our bassist, has now got a pedal board with all the different stuff. Different guitars and different bases and amps and stuff. I've got like Queen and Overdrive and that's it. And I, I, I think I would confuse myself if I had anything else. To be quite you, you sometimes end up too many options, right. too many different sounds to try and <laughs> play with. He's shaking his head. No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember watching the, um, I'm not the biggest Blink fan, but I was watching the, the making of that. What was a sort of big album after Enemy of the State? Uh, Self-titled? Oh, no, after. Fancy jacket. That, that's the one I'm talking about. I was self titled one. There was a documentary making of them on that house. And uh, Mark's watching Travis Barker doing all these fucking rudiments and paradiddles and shit like that. And he looks at the camera and he's like, I barely know how to play an instrument. <laughs> 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 that's exactly how I feel. Uh, just know how to get the songs out. That's yeah. about it. That's kind of amazing. See, see, when you're in the presence of, like, uh, so on the EP, the guy, Ewan. Henderson from Man Run plays on one of the songs. He plays fiddle on one of the songs on the EP. And so, like, Man Run are, if not the best sort of Scottish sort of trad band out. Okay. But he obviously he's a um, session musician, various things. Um, so I went up to Ardgo for one day when he recorded that. I'm just sitting, like, it's done in two takes. And he's, and I was like, is that, is that everything finished? Is that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it finished. Is Pitch that, perfect. Is that the last song in the... Yeah. Yeah, what's it? I'm putting in the name for that. Yeah, Heart of the Sea. Heart of the Sea. Because was he the guy who played the? That was a woodwind instrument. Oh, the flute. No, that's our friend Gavin. Um, so Greg kind of grew up with with Gavin went to school. A flautist. Flautist. So he he kind of mimics um Ewan's parts. Yeah. So we done that live. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was maybe one of my favourite parts of the the very set. Fi- very fine for me. I got, <laughs> got that sense. <laughs> Never played acoustic guitar live ever. Oh really? Okay. Never. Yeah. Never. So it was. I'm glad it went well because it could have went really badly. Yeah. No, that was. Uh, it was a really nice sort of interlude within the. I think it was important for us to play it because it probably won't get played again. Really? I don't think so. Oh, that's a shame. I don't think so. <laughs> but it was. It was important to play the EP, at the EP launch in its entirety. So we played the four songs 
one after one after one. Yeah. Um, that worked out well. But aye, he's kind of just mimicking uh, Ewan's part. Mm-hmm. But honestly, just see just watching somebody just sit down, mics test and everything's ready. And honestly, two takes, it's done. I think of the years we've been talking. If you were to watch us, it, if you were to watch us trying to tell a couple of things, <laughs> <laughs> entirely <laughs> different story. Turn your hair out, fucking shouting at each other. I know. Especially you doing vocals. He's like, comes right. into, <laughs> I don't yeah. know, Mecca Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the vocals. I hate vocals. You're very, very touchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but it's always like me trying to, because the drums <coughs> generally have to be done in one take, mm. you know, it's start to finish where this looking at Greg and fucking Brian and all that and you can fucking drop in day two bars and drop, drop back out to record because I need to get everything right in the, in the winter and just it's infuriating I suppose the bigger the band the more different va- the more variables there are the more difficult it's going to get to try and do that in a clean take all in once Aye. but that's what he's talking about that's the difference where uh, an actual musician he comes out and farts out that guy had heard it maybe a couple of times the I week know. before and he comes and just farts out in one take not a problem to. But that's what he spends his whole that's true, that's entire life doing, whereas you guys are... Well, then again, I don't know if he'd... I know, but you do think... These people usually do it. Do you do it. think of yourself as a musician, though? You're the guy but, well, you musicians. I don't think you can, like, call yourself anything other than musicians, like... Uh, no, no, compared to... You. you listen to this guy and you're like, nah. <laughs> not at all. It's, it's not like... Uh, do you hear the interviews with, like, Rick Rubin recently? And he's like, yeah, I, just, I don't have a clue just, what I'm he doing. He just lies just, down. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds <laughs> good. <laughs> he takes his shoes off and he just lies down. Yeah. That sounds, that sounds quite good. It's like this legendary or the Johnny Cash and all the rest of it would have yeah. missed it. Uh, he says, what is it you do? And just says, I do not like it. <laughs> just lie down, take my shoes off. And I, I feel if the music's good. See, in a way, I can kind of understand that. I can kind of understand. Because if it's for, for me anyway, the most basic thing is, uh, does this sound good or not? And that, mm-hmm. that goes with like the guitar. Mm-hmm. So see, playing like an electric guitar sound, sounds pretty good to me. But Greg will be like, a much more sort of detailed like oh this needs to go and I, I can hear it do you know what I mean I guess just the sounds sounds fine same as yeah on you sorry like some songs like the simplest songs end up being the best songs and then there's a space for both you get the complex ones that people can appreciate you get the simple ones you get the yeah. kind of mo- maybe a more mathematically minded person that knows the intricate details of everything yeah. but at the same time you can like painting someone might not be technically great but they're amazing they're yeah, follow all the rules or not? Yeah, it's in- interpretation as well, isn't it? And how you sort of digest it. I think, like, hopefully on this EP, um, and probably on a, a wider spectrum, all of our music and everything we've released, hopefully there is enough variation of stuff, so that you can have like a, an acoustic song with a bit of fiddle that does they sound completely out of place next to Rovers, which mm-hmm. is a, a heavier song, because there is there is a wee lilt in there somewhere. There's a there's a connection, whether that's a Scottish connection. Now, I don't think it's over the top um, in terms of like being a sort of traditional influence. No. But it, it's hopefully seen woven in there. It you felt it, the whole kind of progression through it feels quite, I hate to use a word like this, but organic. Right. Like, to me, it's something I've listened to, like, I don't know how many times now, it's like in a variety of different settings, like car, gym, yeah. running, like just in the house. But there's there is a nice progression from each one track to another, and I, I think when it ending, like with a more melodic kind of slower pace, is actually quite nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think our previous two albums have have finished with a sort of kind of more acoustic based song, uh-huh. which has became itself a, a theme. But it's nice that you say that because, and I think the good thing I'm enjoying about this EP is that most folk have got a different, or most I, they've got a different favourite song. Yeah, it. like most folk I talk to, they say, "Oh no, that's definitely my favorite." And then it's what's the fan favorite from this now? From uh, Saint Andrews, you know, like seems to be Saint Andrews. Right? Saint Andrews had the most uh, plays. Yeah, although but it's been quite stretched. That like stretched when it, yeah. Rovers was released, and then to to Saint, Saint Andrews, mm-hmm. there's quite a, a gap in between. Maybe it's just because it's more more new, but probably in gen- uh, In fact, it's probably the best response from anything we've we've put out. You know. Yeah, it's sitting. Uh, Back to stats and numbers, th- they, they're all quite s- quite um, similar in terms of plays, right. which is good for me as well. Because yeah. it's not like, yeah. you know, it's like listening to music now. You, can, you don't, I mean, I, I'm probably guilty as well. You should listen to an album, how it was intended yes, by yeah. the artist or whatever. But people want to put a song on a certain player, so that's cool. That's the way it goes. So usually you would see, so St. Andrew's being popular, so it will have 
a thousand more hits or plays than the next song. But they are, they are quite still even, mm -hmm. which is good for me. It means that the people are playing it, and if they're not playing it in its entirety, they like the other songs almost as much as that. I think one of the problems with music now, uh, going because uh, it's on streaming services, yeah. the artists seem to be making longer and longer albums <coughs> just to generate more plays through that yeah. um, and generate more revenue just through the plays on. And you can try it. Albums are 20 odd. 28 songs long now and it's, mm -hmm. it's too much as like a consumer and they end up being too yeah. too long there's but having something that's shorter and th there was a Kanye West produced a, I don't know how familiar you are with Kanye's work <laughs> not at all uh, <laughs> not really he I know he's a mad bastard he is a bit nuts <laughs> yeah before all the anti-semitic <laughs> stuff and, um, <laughs> I was glad you brought it up especially in this day and age um, he he produced a uh, four or five albums which were all seven tracks long which I think is slightly to do with the fact that the minimum number you need for a, a, to be nominated for Grammys oh, right. which seemed a little bit uh, I don't know I don't, I don't like that idea yeah. but <laughs> they were very sort of short succinct sort of 30 35 minutes long and uh, as a fairly big Kanye fan before all the crap with <laughs> get that in there. <laughs> yeah. You've got to provide so much context now because someone, not that we're ever going to get clipped and like thrown off at the moment, yeah. but separate the you. art from, from the, the artist. artist. I like that. <laughs> um, those were some of like my favourite <laughs> pieces of work that he produced or like um, was involved in because there was just no, f there was no filler, there was no room for filler when you say, say we're going to have seven tracks here, it's going to be 30 minutes long, it's got to be, it's all got to be of that calibre. Mm. So I guess what I'm trying to get around to saying is like having an EP like that rather than a longer length album is quite Aye. sits in that kind of framework as well. I, I tell you, I had a conversation with someone who runs like a, a PR company, a fairly big PR company that were talking to Cullen, but they're like it was it's ridiculous big money, so that obviously never happened. Um, and his advice was to not release any body of music, to release singles. Right. Okay. Just release singles. Why is that though? I mean, I think everything is like a big lead up to this big single and then it will die off a wee bit and then, oh, there's another single coming. And then mm. it'll so but it's, it's all like, getting hype. Yeah, if you get four songs and it's like, oh, that's a big release and we're all excited about it and then two months later everybody's like, I wonder what they're releasing again and you don't have that material because you've spent all your money and time and effort on like a collection of songs because mm. it's shit about write something again and then it's maybe not as good. So he was like, space it out and release have a single release after a single release. I mean, I, I didn't really like that. No. Nah. No. I like a body of work, even if it's a small, like if it's only four songs, it's, yeah. it's nice to release something that's, again, it's just been, it's been planned. Yeah. It goes back to what you were saying before, if Kanye's doing a formula, like art in a formula, sti sti like sticking to things rigidly just makes it crap. Like everyone needs to do their own thing. Yeah. I quite enjoy like a long album of a certain artist, but another artist, I couldn't be bothered listening to like, huge big hour like two hour long album but there's certain people i would absolutely love that yeah absolutely mm. yeah it's it needs to come from a genuine place i think is what it comes down to doesn't well, it i think this guy i mean listen he knows what he's doing he, he runs a very successful pr company but again it's that sort of like um mathematic approach to mm. it and it's just like i mean uh, in his probably best interest if he if he really are to work for him he probably would want to make us some money which yeah. is which is like the name of the game for a lot of people mm -hmm. we've never made money we don't care about it what what is your opinion on the music industry these days because i know like so many people are employed just to write hits and you get like the same writers on adele liam gallagher little mix and it's like how are they by the same it's just it seems kind of like honest, shallow now I have, I have absolutely no clue really and see to not to like revert to that question but i'm so out of the loop with it right okay i just don't pay attention to anything at all um listen to music that I'm not really into a lot of sort of modern stuff anyway but you come across a band and I get kind of like not obsessive about it but like something strikes you about a certain band so I'm listening to a band called Lankin just now that Sean introduced me an Irish band just incredible but I mean normally people are messed with their head but you're saying it's just such a different sound such a unique sound Lankum Lankum L-A-N-K-U-M so right. a lot of traditional songs like old ballads and stuff cool. are really 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 dark like yeah. I think it's quite bleak. I think uh, quite bleak. where because the musicianship 
and you know, I don't want to call it trad music, had got so good over the last 10, 20 years. There's a, been this really hyper polished uh, element to, to that genre. Mm -hmm. Whereas Lancome, it's as if it, it's getting played in a fucking dorky somewhere. It's like really, you can hear the breath of the, the bellows going in and out. Okay. And it's kind of raw and dirty. And you know, the singers are great. They've got such a new singer, uh, Lady, what is it? Lady Kate? Mm -hmm. And then there's two the others. But it's really kind of dark folk song, kind of old folk song. And it's absolutely brilliant. It's, it's literally like um, completely transports you. See when you listen to it? You listen to it and it's like, you can imagine these songs being sung by the Irish Legion for America. Mm -hmm. Some of the right. songs obviously are about that and they're settling and things like that. And you, you are almost are transported. It's mesmerising. It's cool. But like, modern music and the approach and ghostwriters and stuff, I know nothing about it. The only thing I could say that I've saw recently, I watched that Louis Capaldi documentary last year that came out. One of the big kind of Netflix ones. Yeah, and I'm he not was He ended up working with like a lot of sort of people and he had to fly to Los Angeles to work with because it's the labels obviously went this guy wrote this song for this person for, and it was a hit so it worked for you right. you almost think if then his best songs or the songs that got him there were him and his probably a few of his pals that are in his band mm -hmm. writing those songs yeah you almost wonder are you uh, I'm not I don't know if the songs that he's written with these ghost artists or what ghost writers sorry whatever you call them I don't know if he's big because of that because he's already big. Yeah. yeah. So like another song that sounds like a couple of his other songs that he wrote himself without these people are going to be big anyway. Mm -hmm. Because Can he's so big and they're pushing them a lot. Right. But are they better songs than the ones he wrote himself? Kind of just seems like they're milking them for all the... But he's even said that himself. He's like, I'm not going to last forever. Let's make the money. Because right. so much... I think when you get to that stage, it's, you're up in the stratosphere and there's so much riding on you as a yeah. person. And that's obviously... You know, it's horrible to watch. Like, what was yeah, that? It's, diff it's a difficult like, watch. The effect hard on him. Um, I just, I just don't so much riding on it that they need to throw absolutely every resource into getting it ten songs that they can put it. Like, and if that means putting more writers in, then well and good for them. Mm -hmm. But obviously, take their toll. Do you know? Good day. Ten minutes and twenty-five seconds left in that song. Really? Good, yeah. good time playing that. That's um, yeah. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Right. Um. That's why we'll maybe have to switch a card then if we want to do the photos. Are we not just cutting to the old video? Because we've already do. chatted about we them. Could do. Save you having to look at yourselves again. You <laughs> might. You might. You Unless might you're vanish, so. <coughs> Um. Yeah. So I mean, we did take the photos. What that would have been summertime, wasn't it? It was summer. Yeah. 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 Time. I was not happy with those photos. <laughs> <laughs> We, we clip that at the start <laughs> of the episodes and then just start. themselves were very good they just realised how much you look like a tatty, <laughs> a tatty I see you've grown the hair out is that good? <laughs> I think the thing with the with photos just big tatty with, eyes. with generally is like making a big big tatties yeah <laughs> 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 Daryl <laughs> that's the potato you pull out the bottom of the bag <laughs> Paul Matt did the middle one. He's a comedian. He's back in Canada now. He get kicked out of the country because he can't draw. Basically, yeah. <laughs> I, I reported him after did he did that. Did we get to draw one here? Well, no. it was one we we did it with Paul. We've not done it really with anybody else. And uh, but because Can you have a shot if you want. Twice I'm over that. No, it's not right. <laughs> 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 See how. Uh, to be fair, the the, pic the, the pictures yeah. that you did take. Oh no, I was actually. <laughs> See how far that artist yeah. stretches. The, we've been pimping those pictures out, man. Yeah. And it's, we've appreciated, those, like, it's been nice to see yeah. those pictures. Have been, they've been in a lot of reviews and articles and stuff. So. Is that a thing no, that thank you, you do? Generally? No, uh, we've done it, like, what? We've done once? it once. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Canvases are expensive. All right, aye. Oh, he's funny, I know. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. aye. Next few episodes released, I think, are Sanjeev Kali, Darren Quano. And then you guys. I was actually, you know, I was actually gut gutted that uh, Killian Sheridan signed for Inverness because there's not going to be that podcast anymore. You ever listen to that? Nah. The Sheriff Show? Nah. It's nah. him and Darren. Was it Darren Connell? Mm -hmm. Aye. The two of them, just hilarious, man. All right, okay. It's really, really good. Aye. Nah, I listened to Such a weird Straight guy, right Sheridan. He's just I know, kind of dead very, fan, right? like, you know, especially with the comedy podcasts, it's all about, like, getting the laughs in and yeah. 
the two of them they're just so happy just to just to and just leave big gaps <laughs> right, okay. they're, they're totally comfortable with it but it's so funny like the two of them you know i'll give it a listen oh, that's brilliant the sheriff show so. sheriff show mm -hmm. right how long we got one minute one minute <laughs> The new year. <laughs> Bring in the new year. <laughs> <coming>. Fuck's sake. Who? <laughs> Who? <laughs> fucking shite. If you start watching our podcast at 10.59, uh, <laughs> PJ will say fucking shite when the bell's on. <laughs> you can put your tie in culling our fucking shite. <laughs> tie that in. That's why they play at the hack in 2007. <laughs> Still shite. <laughs> How much do you feel you've progressed as a band? Like, in your tenure as a, uh, as a musician, right? I'll be completely honest. I have not progressed at all on really? the guitar, uh, on the guitar, right? Since a, a long time, and it's just from a technical aspect, right? Okay, like probably can write, hopefully form better songs. Well, yep, if we can. Yeah, but uh, I don't think I've I've got better. That's interesting. I, I think yeah. live are roughly the same as we've been for what probably the last ten years. So have you became a better drummer? You sort of plateaued, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Collect collectively. No, I, th I think if you're not putting in the work to actually become better, you you do sort of you find your groove, mm -hmm. you you get better at that. Mm -hmm. But I think the songs, uh, in terms of song writing, has probably got better. I think the the there's stuff in the earlier songs that are, that's just sort of you capture a wee moment of magic, and then the rest of the songs are a bit just <laughs> a bit wandering. But in, in that song, you get wee kind of glimpses of, like, wee glimpses of magic that you've managed to pull out your arse. Yeah. Whereas, the further you go on, you learn how to put the, the song together a wee bit better. So it's not as rambly. So did you, was it punk and that kind of like offspring and all that drumming that got you into it? Or is it Probably, yeah. 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 That's, that's, I said that to some boys. It was like, the first drumming that got, made me like guitar drummers, the drums still and drum to your ass by corner shop. Oh right, okay, yeah. If you look <laughs> nice. that up. That's no, deep. I know I know that. That's deep cuts. That's also Fat Boy Slum does that as well. Have you called but, it? Uh, aye, shit. Whatever. I mean I think I'll pull it down. Just have, have to win or not. But um I no no one particular thing. I don't think I think the the more you get into it you kind of you zone in on certain drummers that you like. Yeah. But certainly in the beginning I couldn't really single anyone out. I think, see now, probably a good thing to say is you know your instrument better rather than you're better at your instrument, for me. Mm. So, like, you know how it sounds live. Well, you know yourself like, better. You know yourself better, I like, playing live. You maybe not technically have got any better, but you understand that the awareness is, is more. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. I, th I think that's, pr that's probably how I feel anyway. So see, knowing yourself, have you now got a method for getting like G'd up for a gig? If you if you can't be honest, or you're nervous or something? No, nah, I'm never like oh, blase about it. Like, cause right. I think because we space them out, like, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm like I'm looking forward to it. Well, and like it's the best, it's the best part of being a band for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, like I like going to be recording, but like like Sean touched on, it's oh, I don't know if everyone's as stressed. I, I'm stressed out recording vocals. I hate. I always hated recording vocals because it's like a very lonely pursuit. Right. Cause, um, and when you hear it back, it's so stark when you're hearing it back. It's like this, listening to it on the cans, you hear every tiny, tiny mm -hmm. quiver in your voice, and it's just laid bare in front of you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we have you've recorded you've a wee recorded bit of vocals, vocals as well. But it's, just it's stressful, it is stressful. <laughs> like, and, like, I think we've got it down to a fine art now that no, all of the band and the recording engineer are looking at me. Because, it's you know, it's lit, it's, it's through the glass and... Yeah, so an audience there. And you know you fucked up, you know, like you know you <laughs> fucked up a take and uh, it's just like they obviously the mute button, you can't hear anything and all you see is people going <laughs> two, two seconds, PJ. <laughs> and then let's try it again. Like uh, you know it's coming and yeah. then there's there's so uh, over the last couple of times I've recorded at night with Nick Turner who's the engineer up there. And sometimes it's just been me and him. Right. And that's way way better. Yeah. Cause like I, I'm no, I don't think I'm like an angry person at all really, but it just fucking stresses me out. And there's like, nobody means to like piss you off, obviously, but and you know you, the worst thing is when you know when you fucked a take up, you you, obvi you, you don't need to be instantly told. Instantly, you know, and you might have recorded the entire ending bit of the song, you're like, oh, that's wasted, or. So do you just keep going then, or sometimes, 
Sometimes you can, and sometimes you stop. Just yeah. Because you know it's like. Have you left any in? Like, have you gone like fucking? Oh, <laughs> 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 it's been fun at them, kind of bits over the years. I've not actually left it in, but. Because the voice, it's like uh, you can hammer the drums. I mean, you maybe need to tune up every now and again. You play that all night, all day. Mm-hmm. There's your voice, the it voice. wears over time. Yeah, the voice goes. Yeah. Mm. And then it's like, you, sh- you need to stop for a while. Record tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, because it's pointless. And then you get to a, like, you're just really stressed and it's just not enjoyable. No. I, d- I re- enjoy recording guitar, rhythm guitar, it's fine, and, but I've never, never been a fan of it. People must love it, but I just never have. I don't think of myself still, I think of myself as a singer, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But it's, I don't know. It's like a rhythm guitar player that sings. At what point in the the performing live did Greg start taking a shirt off midway through the, the set <laughs> you're really sweaty it's just <laughs> disgusting I mean to be fair if I looked like that I would have my shirt off as well there you go there you go a few more a few more pounds in Greg I think <laughs> Greg's a wee waif <laughs> <laughs> sorry Greg Greg will start bulking Greg's going to start bulking after this Greg, <laughs> Greg is actually in excellent shape I think he's very sexy <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know when that was it's been a long time 10, 15 years. Yeah, I, used to date in te- I used to date in tennis. Yeah. Well, a few a few stone ago. <laughs> it's embarrassing. It. Well, I think we we get the photos back for for one particular. The last time I took my shirt off during the gig, and like my, both my tits were facing in different directions. <laughs> 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 we just maybe like crossing over, and like one had just swung. So it was. Well, I'm leaving the shirt on for a wee while. You think you look good? <laughs> Camera at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly. The problem is with drumming is you're kind of seated, so obviously. So <laughs> you're hunched there as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's adding a wee bit to the rules. <laughs> uh, Greg's, oh, Greg's obviously very comfortable. And yeah. Certain people seem to enjoy it. Yeah. It's a very good shape, I take that back. It's very good there shape. It is. Well, um, <coughs> okay, look at what kind of shape, shape you're in now. Yeah, right. Or oh, in the summer anyway. Strip down. Jesus. <laughs> strip <laughs> down here. I didn't think it was this. I kind of a casting couch thing going <laughs> There. <laughs> <laughs> is this yeah, episode brought to you by Manscaped? No, have you got Manscaped on yet? No? Not yet, uh, no. I mean, sake, after all your plugs last time, which we never <laughs> used. What was the Norm Macdonald one? The Ma- girl? Oh, hey. The man great. Man yeah. great. Have you <laughs> listened to Norm Macdonald? Yeah, I love Norm, man. Yeah. The man great. <laughs> well, I'm beautiful. Yeah. This is the one you, that's been this is, uh, everywhere, right? by the, the Scots moment, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a good pose. Yeah. Uh, what does this say? What does this say to me? Hmm. Very natural. As natural as it can get, I think. Uh, I, think, I, think so it, I think the the location just worked out brilliant. The location was good. Um set set steel. Set steel. Um <laughs> Set steel. Yeah, you set, 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 set steel. That's uh, our friend uh, our friend's tattoo studio in Dunedin. And uh, we've done a by that's by Tragic. Tragic O'Hara, yeah. Mm. Yep. I think we were going to get him on. So it looks, yeah. you'd looks be an interesting one to get on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, it's that sort of kind of, obviously the nod to the sort of nautical link with Irvin and he's written songs about being from the coast and stuff like that, but in a sort of modern setting with with that um, that art. So it's perfect, perfect combination of both. Looking, uh, I don't know about this one. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> looking back on this, if, a bit of a drop shoulder there, like it's uh, <laughs> a strut. Right, it's a bit of fucking it's Paul Stanley going on there. It was a catwalk move rather than the there's back the, passage for Urban. There's the tatty behind me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Tatty with eyes coming. I was, I ke- I've kept everything in that was in last time. I think if I was being critical of myself, I'd pull this one out. <laughs> oh, Dad yeah. was nodding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shit. I don't mean for you, I mean I would do the same. Yeah. Nah, I like it. It's interesting. This one's cool. Cash. Yeah. Height, height cool. order. Is it? Just about. I think I'm the smallest in the band. Which is cool, Greg. Just one side there. I know. There's not much in it between me and Greg. But he's got the kind of. Look, he blow dries his hair up, does he? <laughs> <laughs> he? He seems to favour a hands clasped in front of the tackle pose. I know. Well, I don't know what that says. Yep. I, there's something, there's something in that. Talking about the topless, talking about his tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Sort of a running theme. <laughs> Stop prodding about Greg's, all this. Greg's <laughs> gonna enjoy this. 
That'd be like Terry when he complained that his balls was too big. We had uh, <laughs> <laughs> Terry and Boyd, who we had on. Um, you wouldn't have that problem with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, he had, towards the end of the shoot, we were up with Castle Castle Milk Brace, and uh, he was down to his boxers come the end of it. <laughs> and um, Wait, what were we talking about? Is this at your direction? <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Is this he, just like last Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> you told me you were bringing your camera. No, no, no. <laughs> He, he was very. Where we're going, we don't need cameras. He was very, no. <laughs> he was very happy to get down to his Calvin's. Um, I think he was hoping for a wee sponsorship at the end of it all. But uh, Terry was being blessed. His dick was too big. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was self conscious about the bulge. Calvin Klein's stock is what fucking a curse. What a curse, eh? <laughs> <laughs> bulge is too big. <laughs> My cock looks too big again. <laughs> again. It's a problem as often. <laughs> I'm just fucking fed up with everything here. Thank you. It's a quick There's a sort of uh, an aloofness to your um aloofness. <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> you can maybe draw like where his eyes are looking. Oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these shoes. <laughs> aloofness. It's just an <laughs> fancy word. <laughs> Unapproachable, would you say? I was I was trying to not say that. <laughs> so this I sort of feed this idea for Daryl, which was uh, one he did a much better job of capturing. Um, the, they were the ones I would think I would have called. I like that. The idea was right because you had the black and white, and it's all a nautical theme, mm-hmm. and that I don't know what film it is, but I've seen the kind of shaky face, kind of looks like drowned underwater, and it's all black and white. That's the idea I had. Didn't work, but. Happy I tried it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. We're too good to document it. Um, we're better than we are. We are. I can't even speak now. <laughs> we're better now than we were then. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then, a little <laughs> black and white edit. See what I've done very cleverly here is uh, I can't qu- quite sure who's like masked by UPG <laughs> of like clipped something yeah. out of the, the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> Which for a band shoot's probably a, a bit of a no-no. Maybe a little solo effort. <laughs> it was quite an interesting kind of venue because we had a few different um, backdrops which we really yeah, kind of milked all the different um, yeah. walls and uh, murals that were going on. <laughs> I forgot to take that spoon out last <laughs> time as well with the Photoshop <laughs> job. <laughs> Where's he came from? Aqualung. You kind of... I think actually this is my favourite, I think, because this was everyone's a bit more off guard, a bit more casual. It wasn't being posed um, for that shot. But you and Greg talking about this? Politics. Something a bit more serious. Politics. <laughs> <laughs> How much they didn't want to be here. <laughs> so I think the next one, we got you tall. Yeah, I like this one as well, because there's a little bit of humour coming through <laughs> in the moustache play. Look at Ross. Greg put the hands clasped again. Worried. It's, it's <laughs> worried. it's like someone's going to take a free kick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then we came back in front of the... Well, I've seen this one in a while. And you're enjoying yourself here? No, I'm getting into it. It was a... It was, I mean, a, I'm not sure if we got the audio beginning of this or not, but I think for us it was probably one of the more awkward ones. We'd, um, <laughs> we're still... F- <laughs> <laughs> that came out wrong you made the let ending w- of this podcast awkward <laughs> as well <laughs> let me rephrase this was fairly on in the whole sort of process um, for us and we were kind of getting into a group of like interacting with people on a one to one basis for Aye. these shoots and then all of a sudden we're faced with like five people mm-hmm. and trying Answer. to Fucking really good looking that's we're uh, intimidating intimidating is yeah, the word I'd use yeah yes 100% <laughs> and um Trying to coordinate. I mean, so good looking at this. It's hard. It's, I think that would be hard. It's kind of like looking at the sun a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Kind of get blinded a little bit. <laughs> I like this as well. Can I go ask everyone to lean back into this, so almost to like disappear? Like Homer Simpson. Simpsons, yeah. yeah. Ross and really went for it. Ross was the only one that really <laughs> went for it the same way. Mid front man at the front. Mm. It's always a bit awkward when you're not. 
thinking of a song Focus lyric. Contemplation. Right? <laughs> it's going through like the various stages of your songwriting processes. And then there's a promo. The promo shot for set sale. It's a big song. Yeah. And the solo shots. Yeah, and now I'll hand over to Daryl because Daryl did a, a collection of uh, the solo shots for each of the, the members of the band there. Especially <coughs> Monster. This is out of order, I think. Start with that one. Just start at the top, it's fine. I think the thing is, like, we're all meant to be very self conscious about how we look on camera or in a photo, but no one. It's almost no the exact effects. expression you were doing there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing is, nobody cares as much as you do. So. Which is, like, a, a weird place to be with it all. Yeah. Uh, is it down a hit? Down a hit. Okay. This yeah. was uh, your idea. We did a series of the, the Eye of the Skull shots. Oh, yeah, yeah. Outside uh, Tragic's mural. Um, it's quite cool. Just yeah. framing. Um, <laughs> that, <I'd laughs> with a head going out of your head. <laughs> Not my best. I like the idea of it, like the band in a line. <laughs> but that was something else, I think. We were trying to like orchestrate yeah, people yeah, and stuff right. like that. And you don't. Because right. I, I think one of the things we try and do or I try and do in our, in our photo shoots is have make it as much fun and ca like as casual as possible and yeah. ju we're just chatting to people but we'll get a wee shot and then we'll keep chatting and asking them stuff rather than like okay guys you stand there you stand there and make it all like rigid and not like as you said awkward <laughs> maybe it didn't work <laughs> um, that's cool I like that I like that yeah, this that one's good. been used quite a lot as well has it? aye it has aye there's been there's been a few articles for this this one cool it's funny because like see when, when um like a uh, like a publication will ever want to do something on the band is like they'll ask you for some shots some live shots some right okay and so it's never us going use this shot by okay. this photographer I was pretty they, raging they that you strewn got all your <laughs> <laughs> so I'm <laughs> glad you said uh, 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 that <laughs> I paid them they picked uh, so they picked oh that's cool yeah obviously got no taste for it anyway <laughs> no but some of yours have been no, I'm, well. joking, I'm joking I'm joking no it has been awesome like yeah. even for the podcast as well, it's been nuts. Mm. Rolling Stone UK, you guys. I know, I've seen that. Yeah. Um, aye, the mixture of expressions and stuff was quite. Yeah, it's a good shot. Yeah. Cool, like. Um, I don't remember seeing that either. I don't know where Ross will go from at that point. It's an airplane in it. It's <laughs> <laughs> a plane spotter. It's when the Richard Gear look into the distance. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, just a kind of casual cool. one. Yeah, I think that one's been used a few times. Yeah, before. I think I recognise that one. But the, the original idea when I was editing, I was in a hotel room in Edinburgh, I think, uh, was to try and match that, is it Rover's music video? Black and white one. That yeah. was my mm -hmm. kind of idea, I tried to get the tones in that way. Um, There's one of these ones that I'm doing kind of something stupid with my face, but maybe it's the next one. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. <that's laughs> that one, I quite like this one. Yeah, that's been used a lot. Yeah, well. I, quite, I quite like your expression. Sort of kind of um, reviews and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, the right amount of like cockiness, that expression, I think, for a front man. I don't mean in like an arrogant way, but it's just like... Self-assured. It's a good uh, Ralph Lauren advert. Yeah. <laughs> TK Maxx boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Makes me look taller. I like you <coughs> having a different expression than everyone else as well. Mm -hmm. As like the front man. Um... Pretty much the same photo, I don't know what happened there. Am I going am I pressing up by accident? <laughs> I don't know. No, I think you're going down. Yeah, we're getting uglier. Mm. What yeah. ages are you guys now? Thirty five. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying with such a heavy heart. <laughs> Did I get your age right in the oh, What are you meant to come in and say there's no way you're thirty seven or thirty five? Sorry, sorry. That uh, oh, okay. thought was going through my head. I I know you thought. Strings is burning bridges in the, <laughs> <laughs> the last five minutes. Uh, uh, you are awkward. You look old as fuck, uh, and you get tiny bellies. <laughs> 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 uh, so these were the attempts at the drowning kind of like haunted shots, but um, <laughs> I think guys going up and down rather than side. <laughs> yeah, there was. Like, <laughs> head, head banging on. 
maybe headbanging would be way to, a way to go next time. I like that one. That's good. So I'm working a casual yeah, one. I just stay uh, in the the album Shoot sleeve the little booklet or whatever. Um, and then if you were just you like at the front, but again, we things like the kind of spacing of everyone behind just kind of. It's very me. difficult to try and orchestrate everyone without everyone getting so pissed off by saying, stand here, but we need to like, throw again, take a step to the left, take a step to the right. It's I think the, the wall was class and the kind of mm. sharp yeah, lines and mm. contrast and stuff. Yeah. Does it feel like a cult leader or something? Shots like, that. It's like why are you at the front? Does it make you feel self conscious about that? I definitely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. See, the thing is, as well, with band shots, and you'll get bands that like probably enjoy it. Like, not not the like, uh, not sell yourself or whatever, but there'll be guys that enjoy the sort of performance. I, I think we're always awkward with, with band pictures. So these have actually came out brilliantly for us. All right, okay. <laughs> we don't, we don't, it's not something we ever get done mm -hmm. on the regular. Mm -hmm. Do you have photographers at your live gigs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, always. Yeah. That's yeah. easier because you just, you I you're in the yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't need to worry about it. It's no posed. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I think that's a nice. We'll cut out that reaction, right? <laughs> <laughs> just laugh, I'm just laughing my fucking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Face, but, um, yeah. I think you've got a good look, man. Like. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, well, I'm no agent too, by the way. The greys, though, the greys are highlighted there. So it's the black and white. Black oh. and white, salt and pepper. Like mm. I'm a, I'm a fellow, so fellow okay. greying man. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Put those eyes. Oh it's interesting now because. To see the hair a bit longer. What kind of tatty would you be? Baked. <laughs> I know about baked. <laughs> no, that's pre baked. That, that's boiled, I think. <laughs> Skin? Or? Peel. No, it's peeled and boiled. Peeled and boiled. <laughs> Pale. Tasteless. <laughs> the funny, <laughs> the funny part of the final edit, we just make it an actual potato eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so everyone got. Uh, I think it was two of you. Every, everyone got like a three by two. And then like a four by five, um, depending on what it was going to be used for, basically. Josh looks hopeful there, doesn't he? Like wholesome. <laughs> He's so yeah. tall, man. Uh, yeah. Big boy. So smile. happy. We passport photo. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's an intensity to those that's eyes. That's <laughs> that's His eyes are cool, man. Like that is a dark, a darkness in there. Y'all have cool eyes. I know it's dark mode, didn't it? Mm, you did say that last time. About to smile there. Trying, trying not to. Trying to smile. Fucking hell, I'm so Viking. He does have a good Viking look. Oh, he cheeky smile. Oh. <laughs> I was saying that. Did you say something nice to him? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen those like shots where it says like this person was photographed and they were photographed after they told they were like beautiful? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, <you're> beautiful. <laughs> Showed them Tarium's pictures. <laughs> Oh, there we go again. <laughs> <laughs> James Blunt. <laughs> James Blunt. <laughs> no, no, not you. I was in like the double. This is a double of James Blunt. <laughs> the song lyrics, you're beautiful. That was Raymond Slang. This is Eye of the Skull, but when I had everyone matched up, because I think you got a close up one with Eye of the Skull. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went through basically the same again. I'll just rattle through them a bit quicker. Varied look the band, so uh, definitely. I like that one. Yeah. I think. Yeah, five I think this is the one I like. Five, five, five or six. Yeah, we did a wee football one. Colin FC. Put bibs on the guys in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was the last one. But I quite like that one. That was a great one. But yeah, yeah very good. And like Aye. I said, we're not the easiest sort of subject matter. I don't think. No, I don't. I don't even. For me, it wasn't like you guys were awkward. It was more like from our how, how am I meant to organize this and how yeah. we meant to organize five people and yeah. we many lessons you kind of learn about because i usually go for like a shallow depth of field and stuff but obviously it doesn't work with a group of people but it wasn't you guys it was just it's yeah. on us to make it a yeah. comfortable experience no, it was good for us because like i said we don't we don't kind of get promo shots regularly so it's it's worked through it's worked well this year because we've had a release and you have people want to do reviews and articles and interviews and stuff like that and they all Especially if it's well, mine, which obviously was, they all want a picture mm -hmm. of the band. Very rarely they say send us live pictures. They maybe ask to, for it to be included, but they always want a photo. Right, okay. Everyone 
pretty, pretty much everyone that was pretty one has had your photos out. But it's been amazing. Yeah, no, it's seeing appreciated them all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been a it's been a good confidence boost for us to, to see that and yeah, to see course. them used like that. It's been 100%. nice. Hundred percent. People wouldn't want to use them if they were man good enough. Do you know what I mean? So they are. Yeah, that's true as well. That's enough for the conf- confidence anyway. <laughs> yeah, you're in there, Shapos as well. We'll give you a wee shout out. Yeah, Shapos. About the guests coming up in the, oh, the right, episodes. Yeah, mm. And your shots in there, Shapos, are quite good ones. Oh yeah. I think so. I need to buy it again. <laughs> 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 I done an interview with a guy uh, last month for this month's article, unless they've cut it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the airship. Oh, is it? Airship cool. Oh, it's definitely. Not the airship post. post. The airship magazine. Oh, oh yeah, 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 of course, right. Aye. We need to get a copy of that somewhere. But um, aye, thanks very much for coming down twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm glad to actually it. have you here, not sitting know, in the car this time. And uh, thank you very much for some gig tickets there. We're looking forward oh, to seeing you again. The yeah, that'll be class. New no, year. Absolutely. And uh, the EP is great. Cheers. The gig was great. Look out for the merch. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully there's cool. some more. I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way you don't, want to be, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Limited edition. Yeah. No, thanks, thanks again for having me. Appreciate cool. No, appreciate Cheers. your time. Thank Bye. you very much.